course, despite the court injunction, the NFF presidential election in Nigeria went ahead. And of course, the fear of everyone now is that uh, we hope there won't be further litigation regarding the outcome of that election that took place at the Heritage Hotel in Benin City, Nigeria. Of course, Ibrahim Gosal emerged the new president of the Nigeria Football Federation, taking over from Amaju Melvin Penny. So today we'll be looking at the implication of the likely implication, I should say, of that election uh, result in Nigeria. And of course, taking a trip to Ghana, we'll be looking at what the Minister of Sports in Ghana, uh, Mustafa Yusuf, is, of course, he's been bearing his mind over the result uh, against Nicaragua, against Nicaragua uh, again, for the Black Stars. And uh, he, also, of course, as many of us did, he lamented the, real, the missed chances uh, by the Black Stars. And he said the final preparation that will be taking place in Abu Dhabi uh, will be used <coughs> to adequately punish, uh, polish, sorry, polish his team. And in the Ghana Premier League, the, the fixtures are now on hold uh, due to uh, the litigation by Ashanti Gold. Remember that uh, uh, they dragged uh, the, the, the Ghana Premier League to court over the issue uh, that concerned match fixing. You remember the case between Inter Allies and Ashanti Gold. That, came, that case uh, is currently in court. And the GFA has decided uh, to halt the league for now until the outcome of that matter. Of course, we do not know when the league will resume, but we hope that uh, it will be very soon. So these are very more uh, what we'll be discussing on Nigeria Super Fans Forum today, your best football show in Africa. Welcome. My name is Olua Femi Ashadu, and uh, Kaido Gundare joins us via video. Kaido, you're welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Femi. It's always a pleasure to be here. Okay. And James, you're welcome. Thank you, Femi. Okay, you're donning uh, AC Milan jersey today. No, it's a jersey that I really love. Love the, I, I love the design. So, I, I, I don't think I've seen you in Arsenal jersey for. No, the thing is, don't about me is I wear any jersey. As long as I, I fancy it, I go for it. It's not a must I wear Arsenal jersey. Okay, I know some people support Manchester United, but I've never seen them wear Manchester United jersey. Uh, those people, uh, they know themselves. But can I, they, let's let's go to. Uh, the NFF, the aftermath of NFF presidential election, of course, uh, Ibrahim Gusau uh, emerged uh, a winner, of course, uh, uh, getting that one over uh, Sheyi Akinwumi. We thought Akinwumi was going to uh, get that, but of course, Ibrahim Gusau, uh, who was the, uh, the president, uh, the chairman of the Ankara Football Association, is 58 year old an accountant. But Kyle, they, beyond that, let's look at. Um, because um, uh, Arisin Jala is talking, Arisin Jala is the chairman of a board of trustees for PFAN in Nigeria, and he's saying that election already is, is an illegal activity. Kayode, we are again going around the circle the way we are known to do. Well, family, it depends on who you ask. There are some people who support Arisin Jala's uh, view that the election shouldn't have held. It shouldn't have held, and that uh, it is likely that it could be overturned by a competent court of law. And then, on the flip side, there are those who will tell you that the, a competent court of law had already vacated the order of the court, which said the, the election shouldn't hold in the first place, so that it was legal to hold the election. It depends on who you're asking. And until we go, or until we, 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 we find final, final determination before we know who is right and who is not. But for me, beyond the legal uh, angle for me, I am much more concerned about the person of the new NFF president. As much as I wanted a clean break from the immediate past, I'm sorry to say he is, Amadou Guzo, Ibrahim Guzo, is not a clean break from the past. He was a oh. part of the Amadou Pinik board. He was, a, he was a chairman of the Zambara Football Federation. Like I said, I don't know how much football activities go on in Zambara in the last eight years of his stewardship as, as, as a chairman. I don't know what impact. He was the chairman of chairman. That's a nebulous uh, position that they, they just fashioned out for themselves. And I don't know what his impact had been. But all I know is, uh, in fact, there, there's in good intelligence that uh, Amadi Pinik is boasting around town that he is told Guzo to take over mm -hmm. from him because he is somebody that he, he trusts and uh, will be loyal to him. I saw in the correspondence between Amadi Pinik and some other African Football uh, Federation 
presidents where he was introducing Gusso to them as the person who he installed. So, I mean, those are the exact words he used, that he installed this person so that he would be loyal to him. Now, that is a big question mark on the candidacy of Gusso. He will he be his own man. After the ruinous eight years of Amadou Pini, are we going to have a clean break or we are going to have the same of the same? For the fact that this man has openly declared that he installed, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not borrowing this word, I'm using his direct words. As a matter of fact, I'm going to read the exact uh, 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 message to you in a short while. He said he installed this person. Tell me, are we, are we, are, are we uh, like you say in Nigeria, entering second chance? Are we one chance, or we are on, 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 a, on a new on a new pedestal? That is left for, for, for us to decide. I don't know. I don't know what to say. All right, Kyle, please, please stay with us. James, you heard it from Kyle Day. But let's even look at, at, at it beyond that. Um, now, we look at um, Gusau as a person. Now, the, the question a lot of people have actually been um, raising is that, um, let's give it to Amad Pini. He was able to use um, uh, uh, you know, the, his clout to bring commercial value to the Super Eagles. Of course, the 2018 FIFA World Cup, we saw you know, how sponsors <laughs> came in and all that. Now, some people are saying that will it be able to, you know, the commercial value bring to the NFF uh, uh, Super Eagles, you know, so that even despite what Pinnick did, you know, with his very good relationship with the corporate, uh, corporate world, Despite that, the NFF still, uh, the Super Eagles rather, or the NFF rather, they still have to look to the federal <coughs> government for sponsorship. Yeah. Now, look at what Kyle there said, that uh, Pinnick has been boasting around town saying that he deliberately installed Gusau because he needs somebody, maybe somebody to clean up the mess or cover some of the track that some people might actually want to dig up. Then let's look at if he can bring the commercial cloud to the Super Eagles and the NFL. <laughs> You know, the other word that I already said, uh, Gusso was a um, former uh, Zamfara FE chairman. Yes. I mean, I don't know. I can't and it's also a safety and security he, officer at, well, uh, you know. at CAF. So I don't know. I don't think he has that his track record. Uh, I don't know. I don't even know what to pinpoint at because uh, he's not somebody that has really done much when it comes to football in Nigeria. And um, for Pinnick now to come out to say he installing based on based on what we've been hearing i mean it goes to show that you're going to be like a continuation of um, the the old administration you know like putting somebody as your loyalist you know so it means he's not going to do anything special it's like he's going to be like a figure more of a figurehead there now he will do what he's been what yes, told to do yeah exactly because from, dictate from of what some people. because i i saw what um, what the 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 comments made by pinnick I, I i saw it too and he was saying something like um, he's my he's a loyalist you know he will work well with you guys and so from then when you start seeing statements like that you begin to wonder where is our football going to so which means it's not going to be there's no good i i'm not i'm not i'm not excited about this um uh, the new president the nfl i mean there's nothing nothing will come out of it it's not as if someone is being pessimistic but when you see the the trend the way it go the way things are going you're just going to show that in the next that if it's going, going to get the second time we, we are going let us just get ready for another another round of heartache for our football because this new chairman, I'm, I'm not optimistic at all. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not happy because we, we are spending like kind of a clean break from the whole, the whole, the, from the past. But it's like we're going to see like a continuation of the whole guard. So for me, it's it's, it's sad for our football. Kyle I remember um, some years ago when there was problem in Athletics Federation of Nigeria. I remember that um, someone from Zafara emerged as president, though they claim that the then sports minister, I'm talking uh, Sol uh, Solomon Dalong, helped the person emerge, and other people protested, and they said there are even no race tracks in the Zamfara, not to talk of um, a, 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 a president of the federation emerging from there. It seems we are in that same uh, situation now. But let's look at the Kyle Even if now he has emerged, let's assume the case goes to the Supreme Court, because of course it was actually the appeal court that vacated the order as uh, stopping the election. Let's assume that the case goes to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court upholds this election. That is done. But let's look at the, the commercial value because money is always the problem to run our football. And we've had issues of accountability that is always not there. But let's look at it. If uh, uh, Gusau is actually uh, an, uh, was actually candidate of uh, Pinnick, 
Let's look at the commercial, because me, I'm particular about it. Because if you don't have money, you can't run football. It is impossible. But do you think it will be able to bring uh, the commercial cloud to the NFF and uh, the Super Eagles? Let's assume that the court will say, okay, this election is fine, because all the uh, aspirants, they have no case against it. Confirm me quickly, let me read a, a, a message that Amal Pinik allegedly sent to his okay. fellow African uh, Football Federation president. He said, my esteemed colleagues, I decided not to run for a third consecutive term for several reasons. Successfully, I was able to install one of my closest allies, Mr. Ibrahim Guzo, whom most of you know very well as the new president of the Nigerian Football Federation. He happens to be my staunchest and most loyal supporter. He is Ombu and a team player. I will send his number out to you. Now, that in itself yeah. is implicative. It shows that yeah. he is not going to be his own man. That is just by the way. Now to answer your question, Femi, I think the Super Eagles is already, the, the Super Eagles is a brand on its own. And we have seen in the immediate past, in the last seven years, I, I, over, I listened to the sports minister uh, Sunday that is saying that the Nigerian Football Federation got as much as uh, 16 billion from the federal government in the last seven and they have to eight years. So it wasn't for a lack of money. It is the application of resources for me that was wrong. We had about several sponsors, headline sponsors who brought in a lot of money. At least I was in a couple of uh, press conferences where this uh, uh, this sponsors were announced, even though we did not get to hear the monetary value of the partnerships and the agreements that they signed with the NFL, but they meant something for me. So it wasn't for a lack of money that the the Amadou Pinik, uh, administration failed in the estimation of many people. It was because of a lack of transparency, lack of accountability. Forget whatever it tells you about uh, the integrity, FIFA integrity committee, whatever, that gave the FIFA ethics committee that gave him a clean uh, bill of health. Femi, you and I know better than that. He's all bluster, nothing more than that. He is a very, very empty man. Now that he's no longer there, we have to hold the new man, Ibrahim Guzo, we have to hold his feet to the fire. We cannot afford to waste another four or eight years trying to look for a solution, trying to look for a way out of the wilderness. We have from the day one, we have to hold this guy responsible and hold him accountable. Femi, those are the two key things. You have to show that you are accountable and that you are responsible. For the, wherever the money is coming from, whether from private sponsors or it's coming from the federal government, like it is already now, we should know, we should be, we should hold this person accountable. That is the bottom line. All right, Kyle. But quickly before I let you go uh, on this matter, I remember the, the, the election run, ran into a rerun or went into a rerun. I don't know if you could remember. And it was, uh, we had Sheya Kimomi and, um, of course, Gusau. And what I saw or what I heard from uh, people who were on ground was that uh, it got to a time that uh, even Sheya Kimomi and his camp, they had to rally support for Gusau. So that could actually have a pointer to what you just said because Sheya Kumi was a two time, uh, was two time uh, first vice president under Pini. So it looked like it was a design kind of to help uh, Gusau actually emerge president. Kyle The truth is, by the nature of our politics in Nigeria, we knew that it was very, very unlikely for a southerner to emerge as the president of the Nigerian Football Federation. But then in this election, Pinnick had all the aces. If Sheya if, if Guzo had not emerged, it was either going to be Sheya Kumi or Sheudiko. These are all Amadou Pinnick's men. They are his henchmen. They run for Nigerian Football Federation. Uh, Nigerian Football are grand. I am not sorry to say they run Nigerian Football are grand in the last eight years. Sheya Kumi has been chairman of uh, the Lagos FA in the last uh, eight years or there about Femi, you and I know the state of football in, 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 in Lagos State. Sheo mm -hmm. Diko has been, has been the chairman of the uh, LMC. We know the shenanigans that happened there. All of them have been working. And, uh, so there was no way any other person outside Amadou Phoenix men would have emerged. Mm -hmm. There was no way. It was so designed that it was, if it was going to come down south, it would have been one of his men. If it was going to stay up 
up north like he did, it was going to, well, it was going to be either Sheudiko or Ibrahim Guso. So for me, this man feel, feels like he is the be all and end all of Nigerian football as of now. But I know that he's going to have he, he's going to have what is coming to him. That I know. So let's 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 just move on. Let's just move on. Okay, uh, James. Finally, before we uh, bury this matter, is it the case of I know how to play my politics? And is it the case of, do you think it is a case of somebody to cover their tracks? Because a lot of journalists, I've heard them say, each time you say we have a Panador, we have a diesel, we have a, a, this oil company, I tell you. Now, you have never told us how much these people brought into the coffers for the NFF and the Super Eagles for all through this time. Now, is it the case of Phoenix played his politics well, and is it the case of bringing somebody to cover their tracks that nobody actually knew what was going on there? They were just covering tracks, dirty deals, and um, you know, because we, 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 when you, if you put somebody that's not from that uh, clique, from that block, yeah, that clique, I mean, there are going to be a lot of uh, like I expose a lot of a lot of things to come out. So it's better out for uh, for them to now put somebody that they can control. Because for me, like I said. So we all end up being a figurehead to uh, Pinnick, you know. So for me, it's the same of the same. Uh, even if Guso didn't, uh, if he had not been picked, uh, installed, according to according you know, to that to thing, yes. read that, yeah. I mean, you, you know that if somebody from his from his uh, uh, camp that will still end up being the president. Can someone know? actually pick that statement and say, "I'm going yeah, to cover uh, this"? Yeah, yeah. I saw it. I saw the statement from a, a well-known um, former BBC. Uh, reporter, reporter. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I saw it. So I don't just want to mention his name, you know. So that was just the old. Uh, <laughs> the old so it's it's terrible. Our football. It's only God now that can even save our football because the way we are going now, I mean, it's going to be a continuation of what we experience. So except has, the miracle. Policies has come into football. Yeah. So. Uh, no, policies is part of always part of uh, our football. No, the selfish yeah. policies now. Yeah, you know. So Not the politi politics of the general interest. No, 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 no. So it's just about uh, selected. People who were just there for their own interest. That's just what, and that's why football will continue to suffer. So there's no, no, there's no way about it. No matter the kind of talent you have, once they head the administrative side of things, they're not well run. The football will continue to suffer. Hmm. You heard it here. You heard it here first on Nigeria Super Fans Forum. Nigeria failed to qualify for the 2020 FIFA World Cup. We failed to qualify for the for the Chan. And of course, remember that uh, uh, the league last season. The league could not even complete the, the ITL Cup or so to say or the Federations Cup right here in Nigeria because of bad administration and so nobody felt that some people should give account of what is actually going on because who is going to ask us? And like uh, Omar will say, say if you ask me, now who I go ask? Let's quickly go on this break. We're about to talk about um, what the Minister of Sport in Ghana is saying. Mustafa Yusuf, of course, we have not heard the last about that uh, unimpressive performance of the Blasters against Nicaragua. And he's, he's, of course, like many of us did, he's ruining the chances that were not taken. And he's saying that the bigger picture now is the Abu Dhabi final preparation for the 22 FIFA World Cup for the Blasters, saying that Otoado will use that to perfect his side. We'll be back. Please stay with us. Welcome back. And it's still Nigeria Super Fans Forum. To our fans around the world, thank you so much for staying with us, for your comments. Thank you for your commendation. Thank you for criticism. Of course, we take all of them, we read all of them, and we are trying to improve on some of the things that, of course, you have uh, uh, put right there. Uh, right, let's go to Ghana, like we said, and the Minister of uh, Sports, uh, of course, uh, Mustafa Yusuf, um, he said that, uh, and I, I will click quote him, he said, we were expecting more goals. We created a lot of chances, but we couldn't convert into goals. This is just a process. And by the time we get to Abu Dhabi in our final preparation for the Mundial itself, I think we will see a difference. Kyle um, we, we of course, we've said a lot about that game. But again, the minister is saying that uh, he was also not impressed with the performance of the team. But he's saying that the final preparation in Abu Dhabi, that Otto Addo will use it to uh, put his team in a better shape. Kyle Day. I, uh, you know, I think you took the words out of my mouth. We've talked. I think too much about this game. We should just move on, allow the coaches to do their job. I'm telling you one thing that we, I think we slipped my mind in the review of the game against Nicaragua is that the fact that everybody is talking about Ghana missing too many chances. You know the positive side of that? The fact that yeah. you are missing chances tells me something. 
that you are good enough to create those chances in the first place. It is different from you not creating chances at all. So when you create chances, you have solved one problem. Then you know where to, where to situate the, rest, the remaining problem, that is to convert those chances. But if you do not create chances at all, for me, then that means you have, two chances, you have two problems. You have the problem of creating the chances and converting them. Now that we all agree that the players created some of those chances that we are talking about, then we should now focus on combating those chances. And that, that's where we talk about the kind of strikers that they that they, they will have in the final team. So that for me is, uh, I think, narrowing down the problem that this team has. And like I said, the team is not as bad as, as the performance against uh, Nicaragua. They can't be better than that. All they just need is to find consistency and raise their game according to the level of the opponents they play. If they are going to play Brazil, they should be able to raise their game to meet Brazil halfway. If they are going to play Portugal, they should meet Portugal halfway. If they are going to play Korea, they should meet Korea halfway. Once they are able to do that, for me, some of these things, I think that will just dissipate as soon as the, fire, the first uh, whistle is, is blown. So I don't want us to keep coming back to this issue of uh, they didn't do this, they didn't do that. Let's look be forward looking. Let's look at what needs to be done. And in the days to come, we will be doing that analytically. We're going to be dissecting every department of the team from the defense to the midfield, to the attack, to the coach, to the bench and to the coaching crew and to the administrators to Femi, because all of these are vital components in what makes a team succeed. We could have a very good team, but without good administrators, the team will not go anywhere. We could have a good coach without a good team, they are not going anywhere. If you have a good first eleven, you don't have a good bench too, they will be a very big problem. So all of this we are going to analyze in the days to come as we come down to the World Cup. But I don't want us to keep talking about the Nicaraguan game, that game is in the past. It is buried and should be left where we enter the bones. Let's be forward looking. All right, Kaido. Of course, we have um, uh, less than 15 days to uh, the World Cup now, less than 50 days to the World Cup. But, Kaido, um, still talking about uh, Ghana, the Ghana Premier League precisely this time, I will have asked James, but I think I wanted to start on this because. Uh, yeah, now we discussed where Inter allies and Ashanti Gold were relegated because of a case of a, a match fixing. And of course, Ashanti Gold went back to court and that, that has led to the suspension of the Ghana Premier League. And of course, we are expecting a court judgment on October 14th, 2022. So just uh, some days from now. But let's look at that case, Kyle. It seems, um, well, in my own premonition, it seems maybe the GFA, uh, maybe they've looked at the evidences that uh, Ashanti Gold presented to, according to what I have here, Human Rights Court. And of course, the GFA, the, the case was served on GFA lawyers, and the GFA has decided to halt the league for now, and they've informed all the sponsors, which is the right thing to do. But let's look, it seems the GFA, they saw that maybe uh, Ashanti Gold, uh, maybe they have um, maybe a good... Uh, line of defense this time for them to have suspended the goal because earlier even when James and I were discussing before we came into the studio he was saying that they should have dealt with that issue independently rather than having to stop the league for now. Uh, for me, I think the GFA have, they have acted in the right in the in the, in the best possible way. Uh, let me tell, say this to you and James: What happens if they try to deal with? this court case independently that like you guys are advocating and they continue the league and at the end of the day maybe they've played like 15 16 games in the season and the court eventually awards it reinstates ashanti gold what that means is there will be a fixture pile up you understand there will be a fixture pile up what we should so the most sensible thing is what the gfa has done they have suspended the league. We are we are just three games into the season now. So if at the uh, at the end of the uh, of the case the court decides to reinstate them, that means all they have lost will just be three games. Those three games can be covered in two weeks. But imagine if they have to cover 16, 17, or 20 games by the end, by the time the case is determined in court. So I think that's what they have done. But the flip side for me, the mo the unfortunate part of it is that the the the, the GFA signed a, a lucrative contract with Bepar, the headline headline sponsor. That's like two million dollars for 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 three years, uh, two million uh, two million a year for three years. Now. That will hurt uh, the, the headline sponsor 
because they are not getting value for their money as long as the league is suspended. And if in a league that is struggling to get money, to get funding, this does not bode well for, for the image of the, of, the, of, the, of the league and it's running. So if this has been a breach of contract already, if Best Power decides to, to cancel the deal, they are within, well within their rights, although I hope they do not. So this is the flip side. As much as I want the Chanticle to have their day in court, to get justice if they actually decide, deserve to get it, I also think this is hurting the TFA and it is hurting the league. It is also hurting the players who do not have any other thing to do apart from play. And because of the kind of structures that we have or we do not have, they may not be paid for the period during which the league is suspended. So they are also not benefiting. So it's, it's a lose-lose for everybody. Hopefully this will be resolved in time so that we can get back to, to playing in the league. I, 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 I just hope so. All right. All right, uh, Kyle, they please stay with us. James, mm. okay, you are like, I, I told Kyle that you and I were discussing before we started the show. But let's look at two teams were involved in this, uh, in this uh, suspension. I think Inter allies, they've taken their own uh, fate. They've, they've swallowed it up and they said, <laughs> come on, <laughs> we just have to go where we've been asked to go because it seems they, they, they feel they are, they they are, are guilty. guilty. Yeah. And of course, they are not seeking any redress in court. But let's look at um, um, that case. If you think that inter allies are not pursuing this case because they feel they are guilty, or maybe Ashatigo just want to try one more time to see <laughs> if luck can shine on them, because of course the disciplinary committee of the GFA naturally told them that they've been relegated. But now let's look at that, James. Yeah, you know, one thing about the law is even if somebody commits murder, if you can't if you can't prove beyond reasonable doubt, doubt that if there's any any little chance. You can you can still hold on to that and who knows <laughs> something something might come out of it you know so maybe that's what I think we are trying to do you know so for me um, the most important thing for the football body is to make sure everything they, they clear out this mess because it's already a mess now mm -hmm. you know it's affecting the league the league is just uh, week week three now yeah. week three and we are having things like this I mean just like what I already said the 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 headline sponsors I mean these not, these are not the kind of things they, they, they want to hear for because you want to you want to watch good football we've been seeing exciting games we saw the the big derby uh, Ashanti Kotoko and uh, Arts of Folk we saw the uh, RTU and you know so the, the, I don't now this this the excitement. Um, you know, so all this coming up now is now put, uh, the, the league now is on hold. Like, just like what I said before, before we came on air that, I mean, the other teams, I mean, they, they, are, not, they are not going to be happy with this because it, it's going to be kind of halt their run. It's where teams are, are already on a good run. I mean, so I know, I understand what the, the GFA they are trying to do, trying to clear out, clear out um, the, 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 the mess that's, in, that's on the ground now. So, I mean, just have to put things right. So for me, I just pray. I hope that all these things will be clear because the league can can just because you you, you totally cause a picture pile up, you know teams and you did disrupt a lot of teams' uh, plans, you know. So for me, uh, I just I just hope that all these things will just be we, we settled and we we'll get back to action. Okay, I, I'll read I'll read the statement from uh, uh, Ashanti Gold uh, uh, President or Chairman uh, Doctor Kwaku Freepong, and uh, he's saying that in all of this, uh, God is fighting for us. He said, God is fighting for let us remain calm and wait for the court to pass its rightful judgment that he told Akuma FM. He said, it is only the court that can decide whether the GFA has the power to ban Ashgold. Please remember that the court of our land are more powerful than any other body, including GFA. He said, I can't go into the substantive matter because I do not want to be cited for. He, he, he said a whole lot of other stuff, but uh, uh, James, the chairman, <laughs> the chairman <laughs> of Ajengo is saying God is fighting for them after you have been indicted. And Okay, maybe I'll put that question to Kyle when I come to Kyle because there was a chairman of another another uh, 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 club mm. in Ghana who actually told um, a radio station in Ghana that a lot of clubs involved in match fixing, and after it became a public thing, mm. he came out to say that it was not that it was not it was, it, it was not feeling it. well. When he made that statement, well, misquoted or what? <laughs> no, he did say he said was not feeling well. I think Kadu will, will, will be able to relate with that. But let's come to that, James. The chairman of uh, Ash Ashanti God is saying that God is fighting for them. No, God, is, uh, God has nothing to do with this. If, we, because if, we, in Africa, we put God in everything. You no, know, that's when we, we want to. We, we, like, we got to take responsibility for yes, our actions. We, we, just, we like to push responsibility when you know that you've you've uh, you've um, 
you've not done your part. You know, to, that has nothing to do with God. If if you are sure that your team is uh, innocent, I mean, you have to prove it in court. You have to prove beyond reasonable doubt that you are not uh, you are not guilty with all uh, with all these charges and whatever. So, for me, it has nothing to do with God. If yes, say you are guilty, you have to prove to them that you are not you are innocent. So. Anybody, anybody that wants to, you know, try to be, you know, try to be on the defense, try to come out as uh, I, don't, I don't know how to put it, but I mean, it's it, God has nothing to do with this. It's the court that will decide whether you are guilty or not. If you are not guilty, I will know, you know. So because it's affecting the league, you can't continue like this. The, the league, the league should you are you are. You are Taking away something from the fans and every other stakeholder. The business side it, of it. As I mean, well, it's, yeah. not, it's not so for me. You just have to take care of this thing once and for all, so that the, the league can continue. Kyle, I think if there is any set of people who, who should be calling on God to fight for them right now are Nigerians, because we just discussed how uh, the NFL presidential election went. Now we do not even know if that election is going to stand because of litigation. And now, of course, the new revelation that uh, uh, Pinnick actually installed uh, uh, the allegation that Pinnick installed Gusau. But let's look at this uh, man, Kyle Day. He's saying God is fighting for them. And the question I asked James earlier was that uh, inter Allied were also involved in this. And I think they are taking their own in good faith. But why is Ashanti Gold still pressing on this matter, Kyle Day? And now the chairman is saying that God is fighting for them. I do not believe that God is fighting for them. That's why the league was suspended. It was suspended because uh, the GFA got good legal advice that's why they suspended the league that's what they should do and that's what they did so whether actually go are uh, innocent of the charges or not the court decide and will know what the outcome of that of that will be uh without trying to play down the, the importance of god in our lives for me i think the way people throw around the name of God in everything, <laughs> so so see, that's that's the truth. Uh, that's the truth. Uh, you, can, uh, you cannot do anything wrong, even if this is true. What is the God that is fighting for you in the fact that uh, they they suspended the league? It's not as if they have been reinstated. You have not been reinstated. So what is the God that is fighting for you? I think we should learn to to separate all of these issues for me. Go have your day in court, and like I said, I want them to have their day in court. If they are actually innocent of, of, of these charges, I do not want them to be punished unfairly. But if they are they, uh, guilty, they should pay for it. In fact, double what the previous uh, punishment is. So that's my honest opinion. At least for all the trouble. Okay, let's go to the Black Stars now. All right, over the weekend, Black Stars. Uh, players across Europe, they were wonderful for their clubs. I'm beginning uh, with the London Derby uh, between Arsenal and Tottenham, of course. We saw Thomas Partey getting that wonderful strike. And we've always said on this show that um, Partey can bring a whole lot to the Black Stars once he is fit. And we saw what he brought to Arsenal in that game. If he was out of that game, it could have been a different ball game entirely. I I'll start with James. James is an Arsenal fan. He, he doesn't hide it today. He has bantered uh, Manchester United fans. Well, I, I don't know, uh, including <laughs> our producer. Our producer too. They <laughs> okay, James. Yeah. Party. We've talked about what party can uh, bring to the Black Stars. Inaki William too was fantastic. Jordan Ayew uh, gave an assist in the, the unfortunate two-one uh, loss at home to Chelsea. Now let's look at party. You've you've said a lot about party today. I think you need to you feel you just party so to say. <laughs> okay, we've said it that. Pate is the engine room of this Black Star. Yeah. And against uh, Tottenham, he also showed that he's the same for yes. Arsenal too. Mm -hmm. um, he, wasn't, he didn't come as a surprise. Let's um, look at the implication of that for Ghana going to the World Cup. Yeah. The implication of this form for, of this Black Stars for Ghana going to the World yeah, Cup. Yeah. Um, every, every country going to a major tournament, you want your big stars to, to be in form, especially when they are playing for their club size. And that was what we saw at the weekend for the Black Stars. Uh, Players, most especially Party, who has been battling injury here and there, and he, show, he showed his uh, world-class status against Spurs. He was the engine room for Arsenal. That this Arsenal was, no, this I Arsenal mean, we all saw it. <laughs> we, we, we all saw it. I mean, he was the, the main guy 
Fine, you saw the, the likes of um, Jesus, you saw the likes of um, Granny Martinelli, was also... but Pate was the main man there. I mean, they showed you, I mean, check out that goal that he scored. I mean, from that... Check out, we even go forward to score the third Chaka goal. Check has the freedom now to, to, to go, go forward, yeah. Because we have a party who, 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 who does the who does the dirty job, who does the knitting, who does the organization and everything. So he gives every other player the freedom. I mean, so that's why he cannot afford to miss the World Cup for Ghana. Because hmm. him being in that squad, I mean, Ghana will do... Well. I believe that Ghana will do well. The most important thing is for the, the strikers to, to take their chances. Because Pate is a world-class player. He proved it again. That without him in that Arsenal team, they will struggle. So even when they withdrew, I was like, I, I hope this is not another injury. But I felt, okay, the coach wanted to rest because they were just coming back from injury. So, I mean, uh, Pate, Pate, we've said everything we want to say about Pate. If Pate can be fit from now to that World Cup, I believe Ghana has a good chance of doing very well at the World Cup. Mm. Kyle Day, Pate pulled out of uh, the game against Brazil. Of course, he was in the lineup, but uh, during the warm up, he said he felt uh, pain in his knee and it wasn't part of that game. Same for Nicaragua. In fact, Nicaragua had to return to Arsenal uh, in that friendly against me. If Ghana needs to bring Pate to Nigeria, we have places we can take him to. I, I'm not saying Yaba Listo. Maybe somewhere we'll pray for him so that he can be fit for the World Cup. Of course, we saw what he, what he can do against Tottenham over the weekend. Inakimilem was also on fire. Jordan Ayo was also on fire. Now, we are hoping that they will be able to take this form uh, to the World Cup for the Black Stars. I, I, even before the goal, I was telling someone that, you know what, I am be, as this game is progressing, I'm beginning to see the importance of Thomas Party. You know the funny thing about when you, are, when you play in his position, he always makes himself available. He makes himself the extra man. He, he creates space for himself to receive the ball, to help his teammates when they are in trouble. He knows, he anticipates, he knows when something is going to happen. He's always there before you know it. So for me, that kind of a player is not somebody to trifle with. He's somebody that is an asset to anything. So for me, anybody who has anything in mind about Thomas Pate not playing for, in fact, I will, I will suggest seven days of national prayer for Thomas Pate to be fit for <laughs> You know what? <laughs> I that he, he, he be prayed for to be fit for the World Cup. Because, see, I'm not saying with him Ghana will win the World Cup, but with him, they will have an asset. And I, I am so especially happy. I hope he keeps fit into the World Cup. I hope he keeps fit. Let me, we, we won't know his terrible injury record. I pray he, he keeps fit. I like the fact that Inaki Williams is scoring. I saw Jordan Ayu against Chelsea. I saw the sumptuous assists that he made. I saw all his runs. You know him, he's full of physicality and everything. He brings that to the game too. All of this, I me, I'm happy that the team, in their club size, they are, they are, they are waking up. And at the end of the day, I pray, they are, I pray they are able to translate it into a fine performance for the, for the national team when they go to the World Cup. It is something you can wait to see. All right, okay. Thank you, Dogundare. Thank you for joining us via our video today. This is always a pleasure for me. Okay, so we are, we are still waiting for when you'll be physically present in the studio. <laughs> so we have... Maybe we we'll declare uh, seven days of uh, national prayer and fasting, like we said for Thomas Pate. <laughs> <laughs> James, thank you for James, thank you for coming. Uh, always show. a pleasure. And to our producer, thank you. Even though all the banter uh, since uh, Manchester City, Whitewash United today, you've thrown all the banter. You are forgiving. Thank you for all this. Being. And to our fans around the world, thank you for staying true with us. Remember that um, wherever you are reaching us from, please indicate in the comment section and that notification bell. Please click it so that you can receive our videos as soon as they drop. And of course. To keep your fingers crossed because we told you earlier that um, or some time ago that we'll be making a big announcement uh, in our countdown for the 2025 World Cup. So get it locked down right here. Of course, we'll be telling you what we'll bring in to you. Until next time, I remain Lula Femi Have fun and bye for now. <laughs>